Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome back to some more steampunk. I'm uh, hovering here, right beside this structure there, in a jungle biome. And if you're wondering, it looks like this on the map, and it is uh, Young's Better Jungle Temple. So we've got the Young's series of uh, mods in here for the different structures. Of course, this isn't perfectly in alphabetical order. Let's do this. Now it is. So Young's te desert temples, end islands, jungle temples, mine shafts, nether fortresses, ocean monuments. The bridges you've probably seen if you've been out and about there, but uh, I covered the Young's structures in the prominence go through, so I won't be doing it here. Um, but the, the jungle temple is really straightforward. You just have to watch for the traps as you're going through it. So, but it's not too, too hard at all. And then when you get to the bottom, the, the puzzle is pretty simple down there as well. You just kind of got to watch out or turn all of the redstone lamps off and that will open the um, final area. And then when you go in there, just um, loot the chest that's in there, like go in there. Make sure you're you're not messing around with your inventory at all before you go in there because when you open the uh, chest a trap will go off and there will be a whole bunch of lava will flow down but it's not a problem if you just scoop up all of the contents of the chest and get out real quick or disable the trap by digging underneath the chest there so that's uh, the Young's Bezer, Better Jungle Temple in a nutshell there. And just before I head back, I'm just coming over here to check out some things. So I'll be doing that off camera, but just wanted to show you all that there. And then the reason why I came to the jungle, um, I was watching Chosen Architects play through here, and uh, they uh, he got the chameleon back in his base, so I'm just doing that kind of thing. I had to find out where the chameleon spawned, and there's not a lot of information on YouTube. Uh, York Mouse covered the mod most recently a year ago, but then I found another Japanese video from two years ago, which was much better, and I do speak a little bit of Japanese, but the, uh, the auto translate had my back, so I, I was able to get glean a lot all of the information that I needed off of there. That guy does not look too friendly. He does not look friendly at all. I'm not going into that thing. Can just buzz by it but these structures are pretty benign there's just a uh, cleric in the one of these guys usually yeah just one villager anyways I'll be uh, adventuring out here a little bit and we'll come back a little bit later and get back into our immersive engineering setup we are back at the base, and I set up a little place to put my chameleons. Uh, exactly like I saw from Chosen Architect's video, we'll just trap them in there with a couple of trap doors and uh, let them hang out in there for, uh, for a while till we get some molts that we can put onto our uh, gear. So I just used the quantum catchers that I already went over with you guys. You just need the spawner scrap plus an arcane crystal block. You need one for each animal or entity that you want to carry. Do that, do that, do that to keep them in there. And yes, this is not ethical. Do not call PETA. They won't care because it's just a uh, video game. Anyways, <laughs> um, as... Each day they will uh, molt one time 
and then uh, the chute will automatically collect whatever drops inside there and put it down there. So pretty much just got to wait two Minecraft days and I'll be able to um, get my gear um, sewn up with the, uh, with the, with the items. Now, in the Cold Sweat mod, it will actually tell you what kind of protection that you'll get from each item. Um, so things like Hoglin Hide is one that's added by the mod, as well as this Chameleon Molt. But it doesn't show you everything that's in there. And even one that I found in that aforementioned video, wool, doesn't actually have any uh, cold sweat modifier on it. So I don't even think you can put that on uh, in this pack at any rate. Um, but a couple examples that I found over here. So something like rabbit hide. Um, see how it's got kind of a smallish orange bar there just beneath the name? Whereas the leather has a medium size purple bar. The hoglin hide has a wide red bar. I guess the leather has a wide purple bar as well. But the chameleon molt has a wide green bar. Um, so these, what these means is the rabbit hide will give you a little bit of protection from heat, I believe. Hoglin hide will give you a good amount of protection from heat. Leather will give you a, I want to find an example of something that, I think the leather just protects you from the cold. I think that purple is supposed to be blue. And then the green protects you from both. So this is why we want the chameleon molt because it works in both of the temperature zones. Now it's not going to offset um, the Temperature in the nether, obviously, you still need your soul lamp. Soul spring lamp. And then what you use to fuel the soul spring lamp are these soul sprouts, which you have to find in the nether. But you can bring them back to the overworld with you uh, and, and farm them here. Uh, you just need to grow them on soul soil or soul sand. And you need to have some... Um, lava nearby as well. So these guys have grown up, so it's time to do another harvest, I guess. And there I got six just from that little harvest. So it does take quite a while to build up uh, enough to be able to do any decent amount of adventuring down there in the nether. Excuse me, sir. Stupid summoner. Got a little bit of arcane essence from him at any rate, so we're building up on some of that for when we eventually take a look at iron spells. I will do a little bit of iron spells, I think, in this playthrough. I don't think it's going to be a big part of it, but um, like I don't think I'll be relying on it to do much of my defense or offense or anything like that because I don't it doesn't look too impressive to me on the surface but uh, I would like to get to know it because I've seen it in quite a few different mod packs when I was testing out what to play uh, so let me get back to oh there we go reload thank you back in here so I actually don't even have <laughs> my anything set up so that we can build our next two structures today and uh, get moving towards the biodiesel which I want to be producing the biodiesel by the end of today's episode and storing it somewhere and then we'll build the generator and get everything powered up uh, in the next episode but yeah, I've kind of been cooking up some 
coal coke so that we can do the interior decorating in here I've almost got it dug out up five high still got quite a bit to go obviously but we'll get there eventually but uh yeah let me get back to my prep because i wanted to do all this prep while i had these chameleons but i also wanted to show you guys um what was going on with them as well and why uh why we wanted to get those specifically i'd say early game when you're on your iron armor definitely maybe throw the leather on it if you're in a hot biome or if you're in a cold biome and um if you're in a a hotter biome it's going to be tough to get hoglin hide but i guess you could do it if you happen to spawn in a crimson forest maybe it, they'd still be pretty deadly I'm, I'm assuming just with the uh just with the mobs in general being pretty brute pretty hard in this pack overall anyways enough rambling let me throw it on a pause and we'll come back with some more and does immersive engineering Oh yeah, one thing I just wanted to go over, I never set up my metal press here. Um, basically, with the, uh, the Create Rolling Machine, you get two steel rods for each steel ingot, which is the same output from the machine, but you get to skip over making the stupid molds, which is three more pieces of steel in total to make the molds. You can... You can automate them both, you know, equally easily. Um, well, maybe the in immersive engineering one's a little bit easier to automate, but... Oh, I didn't get there over there, but uh, I made... I went with the Create one just for... Uh, just because it was a little bit more free and I didn't have to get the power set up to go to it. So if you're uh, wondering why I don't have that um, for this part of the building that's why is because I just decided to use the create All right I believe I'm ready to go here so I've saved you the stum me stumbling around trying to figure out where all the blocks go but we'll go over it pretty quickly so the um, refinery <laughs> is what this guy is five pipes down the middle then uh, four steel scaffoldings on each side the light engineering blocks go at the back of the machine and then the forward facing machine has the two heavy engineering blocks and then your 16 sheet metal go on the corners there for the tanks and then the redstone control goes there and i totally forgot to grab my hammer again and we're just going to hammer this heavy redstone engineer thing in the front there and we get our refinery and then the crusher we just got to throw the finishing touches on this guy here so 10 steel scaffolding on the bottom and then you've got three light engineering on this side and then two in the middle and then one more on the second layer, one light engineering there, plus the three more light engineerings there. The redstone engineering block goes there. And then one more, your tenth um, light engineering block goes there. This thing is super intense on iron. Uh, but then, and you know, nine hoppers on top to cap it all off, which go on top of each of these fences. like so and then we're going to hammer this middle steel fence there to make our crusher so the power input here goes right there and i'm just going to be using my battery for this guy for today because like i said this is just a temporary setup for this guy i'll be tearing it apart um that's output there, yes sir. Okay, double, double check, yep. Yeah. yeah, we only need to make one piece of nitrate. I don't think you need nitrate for each operation of this guy. I think you just need one as a catalyst for the reactions. 
Uh, obviously, we'll find out here in a minute because we're going to do it live and no teeksy backsies. Uh, I need a couple of extra pieces of pipe here. We'll just hook that up there and that up there. So now for our fermenter, we'll need to get something in there to ferment. And we can just input manually, so, and we'll need some seeds. So let's go grab some of that stuff. For those potatoes. Throw some seeds into the squeezer. And that flows automatically in over here, so we've got the plant oil in there already. Do this, we'll get our ethanol. Oh, I totally forgot to grab a piece of sandstone while I was over here. Crusher. So we crush the sandstone, we'll get two sand back and a 50% chance of nitrate dust. Better have a backup plan. Oh, and yes, the ye old climbing blocks, so I can throw this into the top of the crusher here. Oh, we got our nitrate. Beautiful. We've got 720 there, 480 there. Oh, I forgot to hook up power. <laughs> uh, where's the power go on this guy? Right there, and take you back that way. We have biodiesel. So I can manually feed this for now, but uh, in between episodes, I gotta get the garden cloches figured out because usually we would use something like uh, an ender IO piping or me uh, mechanism piping or something like that, but we don't have those in this pack. So I think I'm probably going to have to figure out something with uh, create um, shoots. What are they called? Funnels. Tunnels. Not tunnels. Why when I'm live can I never think of these things? Yeah, funnels. Have a couple of funnels. Uh, we'll might have to do some conveyor belts around here to get the uh, to get the products in into them. But I've got to test all of that. I'm not going to be trying to do that live. I was pretty confident in doing all of this stuff, um, but not in the other one. And then, um, if we wanted to store some of this stuff, like say you might want to put in um, the outputs from the squeezer and the fermenter into a uh, storage area first, in which case you would build you probably could use a metal barrel um, you could even probably even use a wooden barrel um, but that doesn't hold a lot if you wanted to do uh, quite a lot, then there is the towers. Tanks, these guys. So 34 iron sheet metal and four treated wood fences. You just put it together like this says, and you'll get 512 bucket capacity for each of your fluids 
I might do that for the output for the biodiesel in my setup, but I'm not going to do it for these individual um, products here because I don't think I need them, but I guess maybe we'll find out later if I do. And while I've got my crusher set up here, I may as well use some of that million RF that I've got hanging around. And we can double up all of this iron that I've found while I was walking around out in the world. I guess the other thing I forgot to mention is that if we attach an, out, uh, an inventory to the output here, they won't spill that stuff out into the world. There we go, lickety really fast. We get tons of iron and we can also do our crushing or get some of this grit that uh, is used in some things as well. Like if I wanted to make this insulating glass, which you need this for doing high voltage. So if you choose to do the, some of the high voltage um, connectors and um, relays, then you'll need this stuff there to make that along with your aluminum so that's what uh that's where that grit would come into play yeah we only used yeah didn't use very much fe at all in the, in doing that process we should have our molts by now yes sir we do We'll just do a quick test over here. We see my temperature goes up pretty fast, you know, quick as a bunny, right up to 41. Can cool down a little bit in my water there because I set up an extra little bit of washing station there. a piece somewhere in the video I watched there was a UI to tell you if you had the um protection applied. I'm not seeing it on here. Might have to watch my own video and see which one I missed so we don't... Uh, but obvious, or and I totally forgot you can put multiple pieces on each too, right? I think you can do up to six on each. That was as many as I could put on my... But now we can run back in. Doesn't really protect us that much. Not from lava anyways. Nighttime's generally cool right now, or cooler than the daytime, that's for sure. So let's sleep that off. And it's hard to tell, like maybe, yeah, 37 or 38, I think I remember being the normal temperature, but that just might be because we're further into the season. Is there any kind of season clock in this pack? Doesn't look like it. Uh, 
I wonder how we tell which seasons we're in in this pack. That's an interesting question. Ah, this is the one we want. Two nether quartz, any glass, clock, and eight paper. Let's throw that together. That shouldn't be too hard. Yes, I thought I picked up a clock somewhere along the way. did we need three cobblestone slabs and two nether quartz Look at that, my temperature is 40 degrees here. Power says 11. So it's off there. So then is it actually late spring, I guess is my question. And if I don't have this down, it still tells me on the tooltip there. Interesting. I'll have to mess around with, with that uh, and kind of keep an eye on it there every so often. Maybe we'll make another calendar. Clocks aren't hard, right? So, interesting. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. I appreciate you all for checking it out, and we will see you in the next one.